Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us on this journey through the songs and stories of the High Holidays. You know, our High Holiday service didn't always look like this. Back in the times of the Holy Temple, the Kohanim and Levim, and of course the Kohen Gadol, the High Priest, performed the service throughout Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But after the exile, 70 years in Babylon, the Jews came back to the Holy Land of Israel and they had forgotten the art of prayer. Of course, our ancestors were masters at the art of prayer. So came along Ezra and the men of the great assembly, and they established what is now known today as the Siddur. As time went on, prayers were added through the many poets, or as they're called in Hebrew, Paitanim. The most famous is Rabbi Lozer Hakalir, whose identity is unknown, but the Arizal testifies to his holiness and to the fact that all of his prayers were written with a true and holy intention. Now, of course, music and singing has been a part of our history since the beginning of time. Of course, the singing of the Levium, of the Levites in the Holy Temple. But music has a holiness, especially when it comes to prayer and the songs that we sing. And of course, prayer, as the Talmud tells us, is a service of the heart, where we pour out our hearts to God and what better way to do that than through song that really brings out the voice of the soul. Moving through the prayers, we now reach Avinu Malkeinu, one of the central prayers of the High Holidays throughout Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Now the Talmud tells us that once in the land of Israel there was no rain. Rabbi Eliezer stood up and prayed 24 prayers and he was not answered. But Rabbi Akiva stood up and he said, Avinu Malkeinu, ein lanu melech ata. Our father, our king, we have no one but you. And the heavens opened up and the rain began to pour. 
So the rabbis adopted this prayer for the high holidays. And what better way to talk to our Father in heaven, first referring to him as our Father, then as our King, and beseeching him to bless us with a happy and sweet new year. The first melody that we're going to sing today was composed by the Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Schneir Zaman of Liadi, the founder of the Chabad movement, who was a prolific composer. And the second one, although its exact origin is unknown, it comes from Eastern Europe and has been sung for hundreds of years. So I'm sure we're all wondering, what did the songs, what did the music sound like in the Holy Temple? The Levites with all of their singing, playing their musical instruments. So our tradition tells us that after the destruction of the Second Temple, when the Jewish people were sent into exile, 
the families of the Levites decided to stop the tradition, not to pass on the melodies, so that it shouldn't fall into the wrong hands and be used for the wrong purposes. However, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe tells us that in the times of the Maharal, 16th century scholar and Kabbalist, famous for creating the Golem, the situation for the Jews was terrible. And he asked that it should be revealed to him from heaven some special melodies that would help elicit God's mercies and bring peace and tranquility for the Jewish people. And the songs that were revealed to him are known as the Skarbava Nigunim. Skarbava means the holy songs. And we use these today for the melodies of the high holidays, for different prayers. Yodahiti Adino Ki Tzedek Mishpotecho Vivei Emuno Inisoni Ageshivo Oli Ayaya Vaneini I Says David, David, make a reverend. We now come to the Unesana Tokef prayer, one of the most powerful prayers of the High Holidays. The story is told about Rav Amnon of Mainz, Germany, who was always being pestered by the local archbishop to convert to Christianity. He finally said to him, give me three days and I'll have an answer for you. But as soon as he left the presence of the archbishop, he thought to himself, how can I even waver for a moment about giving up my faith. On the third day, Rav Amnon failed to appear. So the Archbishop sent his guards to bring him in by force. And when he arrived, he said, your punishment for failing to appear will be to have your legs and hands cut off. The legs that should have brought you here. With his last remaining strength, Rav Amnon requested to be brought into the synagogue where it was the day of Rosh Hashanah. And he recited this prayer of Unesana Taikif, declaring God's awesomeness. He concluded the prayer and returned his soul to heaven. My dear friends, the Unesana Taikif prayer. Sanetoike <laughs> Emes, 
Soy for We now come to the Yom Kippur prayers, beginning, of course, with the Kol Nidre, with its beautiful, haunting melody. This prayer first appears in the Siddur of Rav Amram Gon, who lived in the 9th century. But this prayer took on new significance during the time of the Spanish Inquisition, when Jews were forced to live a double life, accepting a new faith. But this became their yearly renunciation of their adopted faith and proclaiming their true belief in God. The story is told that one year in the shul of the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of the Hasidic movement, just as they were about to begin the Kol Nidre prayer, a young farmer boy arrived, illiterate and not knowing how to pray. The only thing he could do was make the animal sounds. And from the back of the shul, he began to cry out, Kukuriku! Kukuriku! This is what I can say to God and ask Him for a sweet new year. The members of the shul quickly began to shush him and hush. But the Baal Shem Tov turned around and he said, I want you all to know that his heartfelt prayer, his pure sound, is breaking through all the boundaries and going straight up to heaven. And through him, we will be blessed with a sweet new year. So let's join together as we sing the Kol Nidre prayer. Yeah, 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 yeah
We have now reached a section of prayer which has many Chabad melodies. The prayer of Yale is an old Chabad melody. The prayer of Darkecha, which is a melody which was taught by the Rebbe. And the prayer of Kihine Kachoymer, a melody which was composed by the Chosid of Aaron Charitanov. Very beautiful melodies which have become well known throughout the world and really bring out the emotion and the feeling of such a holy day. Join together as we sing through these prayers. Ar 
one of our favorite prayers throughout the Yom Kippur service, has two melodies, both which were taught by the Lubavitcher Rebbe. One describes the Baal Tshuva, the penitent soul, and the second one describing the Tzaddik, who has a much smoother road. And we can hear in the melodies how both of these feelings are expressed. <laughs> Piato e noi che inu, io nu vonejo, piato vienu, ai na da io ira, ai ra ma ira ira. Oh, oh, oh. 
end of the Yom Kippur prayers and just before that special moment where we blow the shofar we sing a song of victory the Chabad custom is to sing a song known as Napoleon's March a song expressing our trust that God has forgiven us and has blessed us with a beautiful sweet new year <laughs> Lishana Ba Birushalayim.